Hi everyone, good day, this is Dr. Vaughn, and for today, we will be discussing about your transaminases and your phosphatases. So, you already started with the discussion of your different enzymes. You were able to discuss about your um, CK and LDH, your amylase, and your lipases. Now, we will be discussing with the different groups of enzymes. We will be discussing about your transaminases and your phosphatases but there are two important enzymes uh, among the uh, between these two important group of enzymes we have ast and alt for your transaminases we have your acp and phosphatase acp and alp for your phosphatases so our reference book for this discussion will be of course your bishop and most importantly i want you to read your clinical henry's so our learning objective for today at the end of this video lecture the students are able to describe the characteristics of your transaminases and your phosphatases identify the different tissue sources of your transaminases and also your phosphatases and of course state the clinical significance of these different enzymes of course these different enzymes will tell us or will guide us later on with the different or possible disorders that our patient might have and then correlate the results with various physiologic and pathologic conditions of course we will begin with your transaminases again as i said we will be discussing about your ast and your ALT. We have your aspartate aminotransferase and your alanine aminotransferase. First, we will be discussing about your aspartate aminotransferase. We will be talking about the overview or the characteristic of your AST. Then, of course, the tissue sources and the different isoenzymes of your AST. And lastly, its diagnostic significance. So your aspartate aminotransferase with an easy nomenclature number or your enzyme commission number 2.6.1.1 which is your L-aspartate to oxaloglutarate aminotransferase. So this is formerly known as your SGOT or your GOT or your serum glutamic oxaloacetic transaminase so this is the old terminology but again majority of the requesting lab ang nakalagay pa rin doon is SGOT or GOT so I want you to be familiar with this old terms kasi usually hindi AST ang nilalagay na sa mga laboratory requests mga uh, commonly sa mga old laboratories so they are still using your SGOT so what is the function of your AST simply it is a transfer of your amino group because from the name itself amino transferase so therefore it will transfer your amino group between your aspartate and your alpha keto acid to form now your oxaloacetate and your glutamate so we have a cofactor or coenzyme for your ast remember for the ast we have your vitamin b6 or your pyridoxal phosphate so the question is what is a cofactor when we say a cofactor, it's a non-protein chemical compound or it could be a metallic ion. This is actually required for an enzyme's role as a catalyst. Remember, the role of an enzyme is to be a catalyst. So in order for that to function, it needs your cofactor, which is your vitamin B6 or your pyridoxal phosphate. So kindly look at this diagram. Sorry, major blurry siya, no? Yeah. So again, as I said, the function of your AST from the name it's a transfer of amino group between your aspartate and your alpha keto acid. So again, ito yung enzyme natin which will act as a catalyst with a cofactor of your vitamin B6. So aspartate and your alpha keto glutarate. Then it will now form now your oxaloacetate and your glutamate. So this is the reaction catalyzed by your AST. So this will further be discussed in the different methods of the determination of your AST. But remember this basic reaction. 
So basically, what is now the function of your oxaloacetate that is being produced from the reaction of your AST? Of course, your oxaloacetate. Remember, your oxaloacetate will also be needed in your Krebs cycle. I hope you're still familiar with your Krebs cycle. Remember, no? we have your glycolysis, your Krebs cycle, and then it will undergo your ATC and then your oxidative phosphorylation. So remember, your oxaloacetate is a needed substrate for it to undergo now the different processes of your Krebs cycle. And this will create more energy for the body. So again, the keto acid form by the reaction are ultimately oxidized by your tricarboxylic uh, tri acid cycle or your Krebs cycle now to provide a source of energy. No? So that's why your AST is really essential to provide this different substrate. Now let's take a look at these different tissue sources. So when say tissue sources, saan ba natin natatagpuan yung mga AST? So AST is widely distributed in the human tissue. Remember that it is high in your cardiac tissue, liver, and your skeletal muscle. So again, ha, mataas siya sa concentrations sa ating puso, liver, and your skeletal muscle. But it could also be seen smaller amounts in your kidney, pancreas, excuse me, and your erythrocytes. This is why later on, pag may hemolyze tayo na sample and you are testing for AST, it will still actually lead to a falsely increase of your value. Kasi pag nahimolize, marirelease yung AST na nasa ating erythrocyte. Therefore, it will lead to a falsely increased level of that value. But again, remember, cardiac tissue. So therefore, if there are damage of your cardiac tissue, then your AST will be released. So therefore, tataas ang value ng ating AST. But the question is, what are the other enzymes? You already discussed this with Dr. Ian. What are the other enzymes uh, used to somehow determine if there are possible cardiac damage, most commonly in cases with acute myocardial infarction? Ano nga yung dalawang enzymes na yun? We have your CK and your, ano isa? Very good, your LDH, so CK, and your LDH. Specific isoenzyme ng CK will be your CKMB. Very good. So again, CKMB, LDH, and also your AST is a helpful marker. But the question is, would it be a specific marker for a cardiac disease? For example, we have MI. Will, it that, uh, will that be a specific marker for our cardiac disease? Of course not, because as what you can see, AST is widely distributed. Therefore, this is a very non-specific enzyme for a certain disorder. This may give us a clue, but it will not confirm us that for a certain disease because as what I said, it is widely distributed in the different human tissue. You know? Highest concentration dito, tapos small amounts dito. So most probably, this is a non-specific enzyme. So let's talk about the isoenzymes of your AST. So we have the different isoenzymes. We have your cell cytoplasm and your mitochondria. So but the predominant form that occurs in your serum is your cell cytoplasm. But another isoenzyme which increase in disorders producing a cellular necrosis, that's going to be your mitochondria. Ano nga ibig sabihin when we say isoenzyme? Iso, which means same, same enzymes. Because isoenzyme, these are group of enzymes that catalyze the same reaction but have a different enzyme forms or catalytic efficiency. Again, it has the same reaction but different enzyme form. So the intracellular concentration, again, the intracellular concentration ng ating ASC is around 7,000 times higher than that of your extracellular concentration. So therefore, mas mataas ang value ng ating intracellular level of your AST. That's why if there are cellular damage, therefore, your AST most probably will increase. Your cytoplasmic isoenzyme is the predominant, remember, predominant siya form occurring in our serum. So for example, 
if we have disorders producing cellular necrosis, your mitochondrial uh, form may be significantly increased. Okay? So, let's talk about the different diagnostic significance. Actually, if you know the tissue sources, most probably you will know what are the possible disorders that we can find for your ASC. Kasi nga, kung saan siya na-isolate, kung saan siya matatagpuan, if there's a damage on that area, most probably marirelease ang ASC. So, therefore, tataas ang ating value. So, but... ASC is widely distributed in the body. That's why we will see a lot of different diseases. But then again, it is limited mainly to the evaluation of your hepatocellular uh, disorders and your skeletal muscle involvement. Again, pang liver and most probably for a skeletal muscle involvement mainly but not limited to of course kasi nga araming mga tissue sources natin for ASC so another diseases we have your pulmonary embolism paano ba anong mag ibig sabihin ng pulmonary embolism so, nga, how do you understand your pulmonary embolism uh, when we say pulmonary embolism somehow there is a clot that develops in your blood vessel so specifically in the lower extremities then ano nangyayari then ta travel yung clot na yun then it will now block your lung artery or any arteries in your lung which will what will happen next which will now produce a block of your blood flow since in this area AST is located or can also be look uh, can also tissue sources of AST could also be found in this area therefore your AST elevation for your for your pulmonary embolism will be elevated so tataas ang value ng ating AST for a possible pulmonary embolism but then again we have a different um we have a different uh, parameters naman for us to detect your pulmonary embolism it is not just limited for your AST. Since nabablock yung ating pulmonary artery, what would be the manifestation of our patient? Of course, nabablock yung artery, there will be no enough uh, blood flow on that area. Therefore, our patient becomes dips, uh, dysmic, meaning nahihirapang huminga ang ating pasyente. So, this is the primary um, manifestation of your pulmonary embolism. So, if you're thinking of pulmonary embolism, ASC could be a very good parameter. Again, ha? It is not limited only for AST. How about your congestive heart failure or your CHF? Anong ibig sabihin ng CHF? Ano yan? Congested. Congested heart failure. So therefore, what's the role of our heart is to pump blood. Pag nag-failure, meaning nahihirapan ng mag-fail, nahihirapan ng mag-pump ang ating puso ng dugo sa ating katawan kaya nagiging heart failure na siya what is the cause? could be a congestion kaya congestive heart failure so it is a very serious condition which will your heart doesn't pump a sufficient or efficient amount of your of your blood so following a congestive heart failure your AST level may be also increased probably reflecting liver involvement as a result of your uh, inadequate blood supply to the organ so your chf is most probably secondary to most probably secondary to the liver involvement remember your ast is also located in the in your liver so since your there is a failure of your heart to pump blood then there will be no or not enough blood supply to the liver then that will also lead to liver problem later on and therefore damaging your liver releasing your AST that is secondary to your CHF but however your CHF itself naman kasi nga may problem na sa heart could also lead to an increase of your AST so there is a further increase of your AST okay very good and then we have your acute different acute hepatocellular disorders of course this ASD is primarily involve your hepatocellular disorders we have your viral hepatitis liver cirrhosis again pag viral hepatitis there is a 
100 times the upper limit of normal for your AST. Tinatawag natin na ULN. Sorry, excuse me. Upper limit of normal. Pag sinabing ULN, upper limit of normal. So, 100 times the upper limit of normal. Imagine the kung ang value ng AST later, malalaman natin, 100 times from the upper limit. That's for your viral hepatitis. For your liver cirrhosis, it's gonna be 4 times your upper limit of normal. So, between the two, mas tumataas siya sa ating viral hepatitis. And then, we also have different uh, this disease, your muscular dystrophies, and your inflammatory conditions. These two conditions will lead into 4 to 8 times the upper limit of normal. So, mas tataas siya 4 to 8 times. So, ano yung muscular dystrophies? We have, it will lead to your different um, progressive weakness of your muscle. So, your muscular dystrophies. How about this acute myocardial infarction? I know you already discussed your CK, your LDH uh, in terms of kano sa siya mag-rise, kano sa siya mag-peak, and kano sa siya mag-normalize. Of course, the same with your AST since your cardiac tissue will also be the main tissue source of your AST. So remember the reference range of your AST, 5 to 35 units per liter. But remember, uh, different uh, uh, package insert later on that you will be discussing in the laboratory. So, magdedepende yan sa package insert kung ano yung normal value. But then again, generally, it's around 5 to 35. Sige, let's discuss and compare about your acute myocardial infarction between the three enzymes. Bye, I have one question. Do you think that your AST will be beneficial for the determination of your acute myocardial infarction? Again, let's go back. It will not be that beneficial because we all know that your AST is widely distributed. So, di ba? Ang daming tissue sources natin. However, uh, this may still give us a clue. That's why let's compare it to your acute different enzymes. Sige? I'll just give you an idea about your acute myocardial infarction. At least, you will have an idea, di ba? You already had a tawag nito, case study discussion with a patient with acute myocardial infarction. Ano nga yung common na symptoms ng pasyente? Diaphoresis, which is your excessive sweating. There is a crushing pain radiating to your left arm. That Then there will be a difficulty in breathing, dysmia. So therefore, these are the most common prominent symptoms of acute myocardial infarction. If you are presented with this case, most probably we are talking about your myocardial infarction. But your myocardial infarction belongs to this spectrum of your acute coronary syndrome. So actually, mojo ni siyang pinaka terminology or umbrella term natin which is your ACS or your acute coronary syndrome. Guys, do not worry. Do not memorize this one. I am just show showing you the importance of your myocardial infarction and the three different enzymes. Iko compare natin later. But at least you will have an idea or guide. So, I I'm showing you this table. So, tingnan lang natin ha. Again, yung pinaka main term natin is your acute coronary syndrome. And within that, nandyan ang yung unstable angina non STEMI and your STEMI. So, itong non STEMI is your non STEMI, non ST elevation myocardial infarction. Ito is ST elevation myocardial infarction. So, madidetermine lang namin yan through your ECG. So, do not worry that. Do not worry. Again, may tatlo tayo ha? Unstable, non STEMI, and STEM. It is very important for us to determine kung what is the main pathology or problem because later on, the management for our patient will be different between your unstable in China, your non STEMI, and your STEMI. So again, what is the pathology of this? It is actually brought about by the blockage of your coronary arteries. Ano nga purpose ng coronary arteries? Remember, your coronary arteries supply blood to your heart. Kung ang heart natin nagsusupply ng tugo all throughout the body, your heart also has a blood supply for its uh, so that there will be oxygen that will go also to the heart. And that will be 
by the action of your coronary artery. Si ano nangyayari sa ating myocardial infarction? Sa ating myocardial infarction is that there is already an occlusion sa ating coronary arteries. It could be produced by your plaque or even your thrombus. But in your unstable angina, same manifestation, but the pathology is meron pang somehow, meron pang area na hindi na occlude. It's just a subtotal coronary occlusion. But when we are talking about myocardial infarction, we are already seeing a total coronary occlusion. Now, the prop is that a problematic um, scenario? Of course, that's going to be very problematic kasi remember, if there is a blockage of your coronary artery supplying your heart, then there will be no enough oxygen for the heart. So therefore, there will be cardiac damage and later on, baka magkakaroon na tayo ng heart arrest or failure kasi nga, hindi na nasusupplyan ng enough oxygen ang ating puso. So that's why we have to to make sure that we have to directly check it kung sa siya unstable ang China, non-STEMI, or STEMI. So, in terms of the important biomarkers, one important protein biomarkers for us to detect the presence of your cardiac damage is by the presence of your troponins. So, how can we just differentiate the three? Pag unstable ang China, normal troponin lamang. Pero when we are talking of your non ST elevation myocardial infarction or ST elevation myocardial infarction, there is already an elevation of your troponins. Again, paano ma differentiate ang MI versus your unstable angina by the presence of your troponin. So, doc, ano po ba yung troponin? Is that an enzyme? Your troponin is not an enzyme but rather it is a protein substance that can be released if there is damage to your heart. Kaya nga, nagiging protein biomarker siya. It will be very beneficial for our patient later on. Your trop, we have trop I and trop T. So, yung troponin usually ang request namin is your troponin I, which is more sensitive and specific marker of myocardial damage. So, if you are comparing now the different enzymes, yung apat, tatlong enzymes natin, yung AST, CK, and LDH versus your, your troponins, between the four, sino ang most sensitive and specific marker of your myocardial uh, damage? That's gonna be your troponin. Usually, ito na nire-request ng mga doctors. We will request for troponins. Kasi nga, agad-agad tumataas yung ating troponins. Sige lang, i-compare natin yung kaano kabilis yung mga troponins natin. So again, these proteins are released into the bloodstream. It could be earlier and persist longer than your CK and its isoenzyme CK. MB. Sige? First, let's compare these three different um, three different enzymes. Kasi natapos nyo yung discussion ng CK at saka LD, no? Sige, i-compare natin. Your CK, so this is now your diagram. Dito is the degree of elevation. So, okay. gaano kataas yung value niya? Dito is the time course or elevation. Sige, time dito or in days ito is degree of elevation or value of your CK. If you have now a myocardial infarction or you have a cardiac damage, anong nangyayari? The first enzyme that will be released or, or be detected in our serum will be your CK. As what you can see, it will rise within 4 to 8 hours after onset. Then it will peak around 12 to 24 hours. So, magpipik na siya within the day and it will go back to the normal value within 2 to 3 days. Tingnan nyo, mababa na ang kanyang value within 2 to 3 days. So, in comparison sa CK, na other isoenzyme, your CKMB is more specific. Kaya, mas tumataas yung value ng ating CKMB. Now, comparing now your CK to your AST. So, AST will rise to 6 to 8 hours. And then, magpipik siya, same sa ating CKMB, in 24 hours. But then again, mas nauna pa rin yung nagre-rise ang ating CK within 4 to 8 hours. And then, your AST will normalize within 5 days. Tingnan nyo, AST, baba, 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 baba siya, and then normalize within 5 days. 
How about your LD? So yung LD natin, tataas siya within 12 to 24 hours after onset. And it will pick around 2 to 3 days. Tingnan nyo, nagpipick siya dito. And it remains elevated up to 10 days. Tingnan nyo, still elevated up to 10 days. Now the question is, I have a simple question. What would be the most important enzyme that can detect possible reinfarction? Meaning, anong ibig sabihin ng reinfarction? Meaning is that, pag ikaw nagka-myocardial infarction, then later on, nagka-myo, ah, nagka-MI ka again after few days. Meaning, inatake ka sa puso, and then after several days or few days, nagkakaroon ka na rin ng myocardial inatake ka na naman sa puso. The question is, what would be among the three? Ano kaya ang magandang enzyme? For example, we have a patient uh, on this day, nagka-MI siya. Then after five days, nagka-MI ulit siya. But what would be the most um, uh, good na enzyme that would possibly detect a possible reinfarction? Sige. Is it your CKMB? your AST, and your L or LD. It is your, ano nga? Very good. It is your CKMB. Kasi nga, your CKMB will normalize within 2 to 3 days. Unlike your AST or ALD, it will normalize 5 to more days pa. Eh, what if nagka-reinfarction ka after 4 days? Of course, bumaba na yung CKMB natin, and then, pag after 4 days, nagka-MI ka ulit, tataas na naman siya. So, therefore, among the three, your CKMB will be the very good uh, enzyme to detect a possible reinfarction. But, my another question is, what is the most sensitive and specific markers? But again, pag marker ang tinatanong ko for myocardial tra uh, tramage, ano ang isasagot nyo? It's gonna be your troponins. But if my question is, what enzyme would be beneficial or more specific for your myocardial infarction, that's gonna be your CKMB. And again, what would be the enzyme used to detect possible reinfarction? It is also your CKMB. I hope that's clear, ha? Dap dapat alam nyo yan. Okay? Very good. So again, compare natin yung troponins natin. Nakikita nyo? This is your... Uh, saan dito? This is your troponins. Large MI, may MI. Almost the same lang sila, no? Almost the same ni CKMB or earlier than your CKMB. So, usually, ito na talaga nire-request namin. Troponins. So, MI markers natin is your tropical. Yan yung mnemonics namin nung nag-word exam kami sa MedTech. Tropical ang tinuturo sa amin. Tropical. Remember your tropical? Troponin. Anong yung enzymes na unang nade-detect natin or mga markers na detect if we have a cardiac damage or myocardial infarction. Remember the word tropical. So, tropi for your troponins and your cal, C for CKMB, followed by your AST and last by your ALDH. So, remember the word tropical. Troponin, troponins or trop I, and then your C, CKMB, your A, AST, and L for your LDH, tropical. So, we're done with your AST. So, in terms of the different laboratory methods na, na will help us determine your AST level, that will now be discussed sa ating laboratory. So, most, sa ang dinidiscuss lang natin dito sa lecture, is the characteristic, the tissue sources, and the different diagnostic significance. Now, let's proceed with your ALT. So, your alanine aminotransferase or with an enzyme nomenclature number or enzyme commission number 2.6.1.2. Guys, you have to remember this. At my time, look, we're going to need to memorize it because some, some na parang, yung iba ata parang lumalabas ata to sa board exam. So, that's why you have to be very familiar with the enzyme nomenclature of, of the different enzymes. Kahit yung mga very common lang Yung mga AST, yung ALT, yung dinidiscuss lang namin. So again, the enzyme commission number or enzyme nomenclature number 2.6.1.2 or your L-alanine 2-oxaloglutarate aminotransferase. Again, formerly 
your SGPT or your GPT or your serum glutamic pyruvic transaminase. So again, a function niya, we all know transferase, transfer of amino. So it is a transfer, excuse me, of amino group between your alanine and your alpha keto acid to form now your glutamate and your pyruvate. Again, the same cofactor, which is your vitamin B6 or your pyridoxal phosphate. Tingnan nyo yung ating nemo. Kasi most of the time, nakakalimut na parang, parang napag-exchange ito ng mga students. Sometimes ang student SGPT nagiging AST. Yung SGOT nagiging ALT. For you not to forget, this was my mnemonics when I was still in college. So, ang tinatandaan ko lang is plus, 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 plus. SGPT. ALT, SGOT, AST. So, remember the word plus, plus, plus. Mayroon din akong staff dati sa MedTech, sa SPC, sa SPH. Ang, ang mnemonics niya is, ang O is, oh shit. <laughs> Sorry, bad. <laughs> yung mnemonics, hindi ko makalimutan kasi, di ba, pag mga ganyang mga bagay, it's a lot, it's easier to remember. So, kanya, oh shit. Para at least, sige lang, religious school man tayo, so plus na lang atin. <laughs> So, ito yung ating reaction. Ano yung reaction natin? Transfer of your ALT, transfer of your amino group between your alanine and your alpha keto acid or alpha keto glutarate to form now your glutamate and your pyruvate. Of course, our uh, pyruvate is very essential, also part of our of our Krebs cycle. Diba? We all know your pyruvate will be converted into your acetyl. A. So, other sources for the pyruvate is through this reaction. So, may kakaroon din tayo ng more pyruvate para marami tayong um, um, magamit or substance for our Krebs cycle later on to form your energy. So, what are the tissue sources of your ALT? ALT is distributed in many tissues with comparatively high concentrations in the liver. So, again, same with the AST, AST, but your ALT is comparatively higher concentrations in the liver. So, it is considered the more liver-specific enzyme of your transferase. So, comparing your AST versus your ALT, mas liver-specific ang ating ALT. So, remember that. In terms of its diagnostic significance, it is confined mainly to the elevation of our hepatic disorders. So, tatandaan talaga natin, when you're talking about ALT, think of your hepatic disorder. So, higher elevations are found in your hepatocellular disorders than in extrahepatic or your intrahepatic obstructive disorders. Again, pag ALT, think of a hepatocellular than a possible obstruction. In acute inflammatory conditions of the liver, ALT is higher than your AST. Again, pag mga inflammatory conditions ng liver, think of ALT. Mas mataas yung ALT value than our AST. Bakit kaya? It is tend to remain elevated longer as a result of the higher half-life of your ALT in our serum. Kasi the half-life of our ALT is around 24 hours compared to your AST. So again, your tends to remain elevated longer as a result of the longer half-life of your ALT, which is 24 hours, and your AST, which is 16 hours. Kaya mas tumataas ang value ng ALT. So something to do with the uh, half-life value. Doc Fon, how about MI? Um, can we see... MI in ALT, can we compare or use your ALT also in myocardial infarction similar with AST since AST and ALT is the same group man sila, right? And remember, we still have smaller sources ng ALT sa ating puso. Can we, uh, can we do that? Can we check that using your ALT? MI using now your ALT? Even though your cardiac tissue contains a small amount of your ALT, small amount of your ALT activity but the serum level usually remains normal in cases of myocardial infarction unless merong problema sa liver. Again, we all know that your AST could be a 
a good uh, can be helpful in our cases na meron tayong myocardial infarction. So our question is, pwede ba ang ating ALT? Yes, pwede in the sense that meron din namang smaller sources ang ating AST. Meron, I mean, ang ating puso, meron siyang small concentration ng ALT. But then again, during cardiac damage, it will still remain normal. So, so therefore, hindi pala siya magagamit. I'm so sorry. Hindi siya natin magagamit as a parameter for that. However, if you have cardiac dam, if you have MI, tapos may liver damage ka, then that's a time that you will see a increase of your ALT because there is already involvement of your liver. There is already hepatocellular disorder. Okay? Very good. Again, the reference range value natin is around 7 to 45. So, in terms of the diagnostic significance versus AST, AST versus ALT, tingnan natin, most forms of your acute hepatocellular injury, AST will be higher than ALT initially. Again, most form of acute hepatocellular injury, mas mataas muna ang AST, higher than your ALT initially because of the higher activity of your AST in your hepatocytes. Again, remember at remember natin, Yung total cytoplasmic AST natin is present highest in our in our hepatocyte. Kaya mas tumataas yung AST natin compared sa ALT initially. The AST value, your total cytoplasmic AST, di ba? Remember, meron tayong different isoenzymes ng atong AST. Yung AST natin is level is approximately 7,000 times than that of your plasma. Your ALT naman, is also present uh, presently high naman sa ating hepatocyte, similar with your AST. But the level is only 3,000 times of your plasma. So, mas mataas pa rin yung ating AST. But within 24 to 48 hours, particularly if, if there is an ongoing damage, your ALT now becomes higher than that of your AST based on its longer half-life. So, nababaliktad na, na nag-change na, no? Initially, AST, kasi nga, mas mataas ang value ng ating AST, specifically your cytoplasmic AST, 17,000 times, and your ALT is 3,000 times lang, eh. Pero, if there is a continuing damage, then, that's the time that your ALT becomes higher than the AST because of the half-life. Sabi natin kanina, ang half-life, of your ALT is around 24 hours, 16 hours ang sa ating ASC. But if you gonna read your book, sa Henry's, ang ALT is around 47 hours ang half-life, ang ASC is 17 hours. That's for Henry's. Kung kanina, yung, yung 24 hours for ALT and 16 hours for ASD, dyan yun sa Bishop. But even though nagkakas... There's a difference, big, big difference sa kanilang values, but as what you can see, mas mataas pa rin yung half-life ng ating ALT. But, there is an exception to this rule. Yung exception na mas mataas yung ALT later on compared sa AST if there is an ongoing damage. Ano kayang exception natin? That's gonna be your acute alcohol-induced hepatocyte injury or your alcoholic hepa. Again, there is an exception to this rule. It's gonna be your acute alcohol-induced hepatocyte injury or your alcoholic hepatitis. So, anong nangyayari dito? May pag-aaral, a certain study suggests that your alcohol will induce a mitochondrial damage. So, again, if there is a mitochondrial damage, anong nangyayari? It will release your mitochondrial AST. Again, going back sa ating isoenzymes, sa ating AST, remember, we have a mitochond we have a mitochondrial isoenzyme ng ating AST. So, since ang damage ng ating alcohol is going to the mitochondria, therefore, it will now release your mitochondrial AST. Besides being the predominant form of your AST in your hepatocyte, it has a Longer half-life of 87 hours than of your ALT and your extra mitochondrial AST. So again, another, ano nga yun? 
Exception to the rule natin is your alcoholic hepatitis kasi nga na, 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 ang alcohol will cause a damage of your mitochondrial releasing your mitochondrial AST. Then, because your mitochondrial AST also will have higher half-life. Imagine an 87 hours half-life. Kaya, mas mataas yung AST compared sa ALT. So again ha, remember the exception here. This frequently result now in your uh, disproportionate elevation of your AST over your ALT, yielding an what we term as your AST-ALT quotient. Ito yung tinatawag natin na deritis ratio. So remember that ha, anong terminology we're in your AST will be much higher compared to your ALT. That's your, that's your AST-ALT quotient or your deritis ratio. So, ang ratio natin sa AST-ALT, since mataas yung AST, will be 3 to 4 is to 1 of your ALT. So, again, anong tawag? Diritis ratio, AST-ALT quotient. Ang ratio natin is 3 to 4 of your AST is to 1 of your ALT. But, in more recent studies, it was found out that your AST-ALT ratio also suggests an advanced alcoholic rate. Uh, liver, uh, advanced alcoholic liver. So therefore, um, pag tumataas nga ang AST compared to your ALT after certain damage, uh, it will actually tell us that there is a possible um, advanced alcoholic liver. So I want you to read more about your deritis ratio sa ating Henry's. E dito makikita sa ating bishop guys ha. So kindly read your Henry's, the 22nd, um, 22nd na uh, edition ng ating Henry's, page 300. Again, ha, I want you to read this part. It's very important. Page 303. Okay? Okay. We're done with our trans uh, transaminases with your AST and your ALT. Ayun, pupunta naman tayo sa different, uh, different group naman tayo, which is your phosphatases. Dito, we will also discuss another two important enzymes, your alkaline phosphatase and your acid phosphatase. So, similar lang sila, nagkakaiba lang sila sa pH medium na gagamitin natin. So, for ALP, that's alkaline. ACP, that's your acid. First, let's talk about your alkaline phosphatase. So, again, we will be discussing about the overview tissue source isoenzyme and the diagnostic significance. So, enzyme nomenclature number 3.1.3.1 or your orthophosphoric monoester phosphohydrolase or but in an alkaline optimum. Again, alkaline na media. So, in terms of its action, it catalyzes the hydrolysis of your various phosphomonoesters at an alkaline pH. So, anong, anong nangyayari dito? It will be beneficial to liberate your inorganic phosphate from your organic phosphate ester with a concomitant production of your alcohol. Since this is an alkaline, the optimal pH for this reaction to occur is within 9 to 10. And the important activators natin is your magnesium and your zinc. So, what is the purpose of your activators? Ano ba, ano, pa, ano ba ang enzyme activators? So, when we say enzyme activators, these are your chemical compounds that will increase a velocity of your enzymatic reaction. It will bind to your enzymes and increase their activity. So, kaya siya activator. It will tend to activate or increase the activity of your enzyme. So, parang hinihazen niya pa yung activity ng ating enzyme. So, ito yung ating chemical reaction. It will, your alkaline phosphatase at a pH of 9 to 10, it will cause now a, a, it will liberate now your phosphate group sa ating inorganic phosphate, from our organic phosphate. Liberate inorganic phosphate, your inorganic phosphate from your organic phosphate ester. That's the purpose of your alkaline Phosphatase. And also, it will produce your alcohol. You liberate itong inorganic phosphate with your alcohol from your phosphomonoester or from your organic phosphate ester. 
tissue sources ng ating ALP, your ALP, the activity is present on all cell surfaces in most human tissue. Again, no? In terms of tissue sources, no? Almost, uh, in most human tissue. But the highest concentrations are found in your intestine, liver, bone, spleen, placenta, and kidney. Napakadaming tissue sources. In the liver, the enzyme is located in both your sinusoid, uh, sinusoidal and your bile canalicular membranes. The activity in bone is confined to the osteoblast, those cells involved in the production of our bone matrix. In terms of the specific location of enzyme within the tissue, it will now account for the more predominant elevation in certain disorder. Meaning to say that, kung doon natatutuhan ating ALP, tapos tumataas ang value, then most probably, the problem is within that organ. Okay? But however, we have to determine what isoenzyme of your ALP. Kasi nga, napakadaming tissue sources na ating matatagpuan. We have kidney, liver, spleen, bone, ang dami-dami, etc. So, in order for us to determine what isoenzyme ang ating tinutukoy, kasi nga, again, as I said, kung saan natin siya nag nakikita yung nag-increase, then most probably the problem is within that part or area. So, we have to identify those specific isoenzyme. There is an approach for us to identify your ALP. This is the four important parameters for us to determine the different isoenzyme through your electrophoresis, through heat stability, whether it is stay, uh, heat labile or not, through chemical inhibition, and through the different abnormal fraction. So ito yung ways natin para ma-identify ang ating ALP isoenzymes. For, we will discuss this one by one. Unahin na muna natin yung ating electrophoresis. So again, your ALP exists as a number of your isoenzyme. Kasi nga, di ba? It is found in almost any, in every organ sa ating katawan. But the major isoenzymes which are found in the serum are derived from your liver, bone, placenta, and your intestinal alkaline phosphatase. So ito yung important natin na mga isoenzyme that can be detected using your electrophoresis. So again, what is the purpose of this electrophoresis? This is a single most useful technique but somehow there will be an overlapping of these different isoenzymes. Pag mag-overlap yan, nag-overlap ang liver sa bone, then there would be a difficulty na madidetermine natin kung ano talaga yung nag-increase. For example, there's a peak in one graph and there's also another peak. Therefore, hindi natin alam whether it is a liver or a bone because they, there is an overlapping. So therefore, there is another technique naman na we're in your electrophoresis will be combined with another methodology. It could be an immunochemical method. Kasi nga, again ha, remember, in electrophoresis, there is an overlap between your liver and bone. So remember that ha, remember that. There is an overlap between your liver and bone. Sige lang, i-discuss natin to isa-isa. Unahin muna natin ang liver ALP. Sa electrophoresis, nagmamigrate unang-una ang ating liver ALP. Migrates the fastest sa ating electrophoresis, your liver ALP. The liver fraction migrates the fastest followed by your bone, placenta, and your intestinal fraction. Again, una ang liver, followed by the bone, followed by the placenta, and lastly your intestine. LBPI. <laughs> Yan yung mnemonic ko dati. Until, no. No, you know what? No? Kung gumagawa ka ng sarili mong mga mnemonics, kahit uh, during your board exam review, kung ano yung mga usually ginagawa mong mnemonics, yan yung talaga yung still maalala mo. So, that's why I would really suggest that make your own mnemonics. Because later on, even though na through time, pagdating mo ng board exam, still, you will be using the same mnemonics. It will be a lot easier compared na kung doon ka pagagawa ng mnemonics. So, I prefer na you make your own mnemonics kasi yung mnemonics natin, LBPI, di ba? Wala, wala siya nag-make sense, no? Rag-letter lang siya, pero naalala ko pa rin. So, liver, BPI, bone, placenta, uh, intestine, okay? The liver isoenzyme can actually be divided into two fractions. So, meron tayong dalawang fractions ng ating liver ALP. We have your major liver fraction 
and your fast liver fraction. Again, the major liver fraction and the fast liver fraction or your alpha 1 liver. The major, itong major liver fraction could be seen in the different hepatobiliary conditions. Your fast liver or alpha 1 could be in a seen in a metastatic carcinoma of the liver. Pag sinabi natin metastatic, ano ibig sabihin niya? Metastatic cancer. Meaning, pag metastatic cancer, therefore, therefore, kumalat na yung cancer sa different organs ng katawan. Ito yung sinasabi natin, usually, staging na. Stage 4, kasi pag METS na yan, stage 4 na yan. Malala at mahirap na yung gamutin. Kasi nga, kumakalat na sa buong katawan. Usually, stage 4 na yan ang classification yan. Metastatic carcinoma of the liver, other hepatobiliary diseases, and a valuable indicator of obstructive liver disease. Now, your fast liver function is termed as your alpha liver 1. Because to compare, again, to differentiate your fast liver function to your ma major liver function, anong ga, paano natin siya madi-differentiate through your electrophoresis? Your fast liver fraction will migrate a nodal to your major liver fraction or your major band. Again, yung fast liver fraction natin will migrate a nodal to the major band. And your fast liver will correspond to your alpha 1 fraction of your protein electrophoresis. Diba? May electrophoresis tayo. And then, it will, it will, your fast liver, it will correspond sa ating alpha 1 na fraction. Kung alpha 1 fraction yung nag-peak, nag, nag most probably that's a fast liver fraction. Kasi nga, doon siya mag-peak. Doon siya makikita. Doon siya magko-correspond. Kaya nga, ang other term niya is alpha 1 liver. So remember that ha? Again, paano natin may differentiate ang fast liver sa ating major liver? Yung fast liver is a nodal to your major bond. And your fast liver correspond to your alpha 1 protein. So therefore, pag may peak doon, si fast liver fraction na yun. Okay? Now, how about your bone ALP? Your bone ALP, it will increase due to osteoblastic activity. So again, of course, bone. So therefore, it has something to do with your osteoblastic activity. It is normally elevated in children during periods of growth and in adults older than age 50. Now, that's gonna be the problem. Kasi, pag ang patient natin is bata and or adult is more than 50, then we would not know whether yung tumaas siya because of a certain osteoblastic problem or is it because of a physiologic problem condition lamang na normally matatagpuan sa bata. Kasi nga, children, normally growing. So, there is a lot of osteoblastic activity. Kaya, tumataas yung ating bone ALP. And also, in adult older than age 50. So, therefore, your elevated ALP may be difficult to interpret in this kind of cases. Next, we have your intestinal ALP. Now, it depends on the blood group and secretor status of the individual. So, depende kung anong blood group ka. It could be your individuals who have blood group na B and O. And there are dapat secretor status sila. Most likely, they will have this kind of ALP isoenzyme. Again, magdedepende sa blood group. Usually, individual with blood group B and O. And dapat secretors sila increases after consumption of a fatty meal and then bound by erythrocyte of your A group and in terms of diseases, um, diseases of your digestive tract and your cirrhosis and usually they are seen in patients also with chronic hemodialysis. Okay? But the question is, you know what guys, um, magtataka kayo, these are not well practiced sa hospital setup sa Philippines where we're in magre-request ako ng ah magre-request ako ng intestinal ALP. Excuse me. Ah magre-request ako ng placental ALP. Ah magre-request ako nito kasi I want to determine in reality when you when you become doctors or even when you become medical technologists most of the time we are not able to really identify what specific ALP. 
all you have to do is request ALP lang chita. Request ALP. And then you go clinicals. Of course, in order for us to, 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 to diagnose a certain disorders, you always go back to your patient. You always go back sa, kanang, sa kanyang clinical status, ano bang symptoms ng pasyente, ano bang signs and symptoms ng pasyente, and then correlate also with your laboratory setup or your laboratory test. So you don't have to really, really specify the different isoenzyme. But at least we were able to identify lang no, the different isoenzyme. Okay? Now, another parameter for us to determine your ALP isoenzyme is through your heat stability. Tapos na tayo sa electrophoresis. Ngayon, dito na tayo sa heat stability. Your ALP activity will measure before and after heating the serum at 56 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. Again, paano natin malalaman? Based on the heat stability, measured before and after heated the serum at 56 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. Then for us to determine whether it is a bone ALP or your, or your liver ALP, your bone ALP, if there is a residual activity after heating your serum, then heating is less than 20% rather of the total activity before heating, that's going to be your bone ALP. Again, if there is residual activity after heating is 20% lamang of the total activity before heating, then that's going to be your bone ALP. But a liver ALP, if it's greater than 20% of the activity, will still be remain, will still remain. So ha, remember that ha, pag less than 20% na lang, bone ALP. Pag greater than 20%, that's your liver ALP. Among the four, your placental ALP will be the most heat stable. Placental ALP will be the most heat stable of the four major fraction, followed by your intestine, liver, and your bone fraction in decreasing heat stability. So iba na dati, ang naalala natin is yung BPI. Ay, BPI, di ba yun? Ay, BPI. But dito, ay LBPI yung di ba kanina, yung mag-migrates fastest, yung liver, bone, uh, placenta, intestine. Dito naman, iba. Remember, the, ang unang-una na pinaka-heat stable is yung placenta, followed by intestine, liver, and bone. So, PILB. PILB. Di ba mahirap na ma-memorize yun? <laughs> so, it's up to you kung paano yung gagawin ng mnemonic. So, again, unang-una, most heat stable, placenta, followed by intestine, liver, and bone. So, decreasing order na yan. Your placenta, ALP, will resist heat denaturation at 65 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. So, remember that. Heat inactivation is actually, um, yung heat stability or heat inactivation, actually, hindi yan siya masyadong ginagamit natin. Kasi nga, it's a very impre uh, imprecise method. Hindi siya accurate na method, for the differentiation because we have to consider a lot of factors. What are those factors? Dapat correct yung temperature natin. So, da dapat controlado yung temperature. In terms of timing, in terms of the different analytical method sensitivity. So, therefore, because of those factors that will may affect our result, your heat inactivation method is very not precise or very, very not precise, okay? Imprecise method. And also, in addition to some degree of overlap, di ba kanina may overlapping tayo sa electrophoresis between your bone and liver, still, there is an overlap between your liver and bone. So that's why, remember lang din na, medyo nag-overlap, overlap din ang bone and liver. Basta ask, so when I ask about overlapping, no, partner din ang bone and liver. Another methodology to differentiate your ALP is through chemical inhibition. So we have the different uh, chemicals that we can use for us to differentiate the different ALP isoenzymes. So again, a third approach to, ident to the identification of your ALP is based on their selective chemical inhibition. So we have your phenylalanine, which is one commonly used that have been used as an inhibitor compared with your levamisole and your 3M urea. Ito talagang ginagamit and very, uh, very common na ginagamit. Your phenylalanine will inhibit your 
intestinal ALP and your placental ALP in greater extent than your liver and your bone ALP. Again, your phenylalamine, in inhibit niya ang ating intestinal ALP and your placental ALP in greater extent than that of the liver and bone. However, we cannot differentiate between the pairs. Kasi nga, partner sila and partner ito. However, mahihirapan tayong alamin kung whether it is liver or bone, whether it is intestinal ALP or placental. So, the possible to differentiate between the pairs. Your levamisole, it will inhibit now your bone ALP and your liver ALP. Your 3M urea, it will inhibit your bone ALP. Matatagpuan ito sa ating Henry's na books. Majority sa aking discussion nasa bishop lamang, pero there are still some of the information that I want you to read sa ating Henry's. And the last isoenzyme are the different abnormal fractions. So, pag sinabing abnormal fraction, we are referring to fractions that are associated with cancer. So, these are uh, fractions associated with cancers. Ito yung tinatawag natin na carcino placental alkaline phosphatases. We have your Regan isoenzyme and Nagao isoenzyme. So, it's a carcino placental because placental because it's similar with your placental na ALP but, however, related to cancer. Kaya tinatawag na carcino placental ALP. Sige, let's talk about your Regan isoenzyme. Your Regan isoenzyme, ectopic production of an enzyme by malignant tissue. So, there could be an ectopic production. Pag sinabi natin ectopic, ano yung ibig sabihin ng ectopic? Diba? We have an ectopic pregnancy. Pag sinabi natin ectopic pregnancy, meaning the pregnant that the baby or the fetus is growing not on the proper location. Hindi dapat, di ba? Dapat nasa uterus. However, once it becomes ectopic, it could grow any part in any part of the body. Most likely, ang pinaka-common na uh, ectopic preg pregnancy, saan matatagpuan? It's in your fallopian tube. So, similar terminology, ectopic meaning in a different location by the presence of a malignant tissue. So, there is a, it can be detected in the carcinomas of your lung, breast, colon, ovarian, and your gynae cancers or other gynecologic uh, location. It migrates as the bone ALP, same position. Remember ha, your Regan isoenzyme will migrate similar to your bone ALP. Most hit stable of your ALP and it resists denaturation which is 65 degrees for 30 minutes. Again, it will be inhibited by your phenylalanine. So kindly take note these are uh, different characteristics. Usually, dara na mag maggawas-gawas ang mga questions na maglibog mo kung inhibited ba ito sa phenylalanine, apil ba siya, or dili. So, you have to take note their specific characteristics. Your Regan isoenzyme will have a low incidence sa ating cancer patients. So, medyo hindi siya masyadong uh, makakadetect in terms of the presence of malignancy, in terms of the diagnosis of malignancy. However, this could be very useful in terms of monitoring the effects of your therapy. Kasi pag wala na yung Regan isoenzyme, then we could say that the treatment is successful. That's the main purpose of your Regan. Hindi natin siya masyadong nadetect. It could be rarely detected. But when it is becomes detected tapos biglang nawala, then that could be a very good indicator that our therapy or treatment is successful. Next, we have your Nagao isoenzyme. It is a considered as a variant of your Regan isoenzyme. Kumbaga, parang variant, ano yung corona? <laughs> so, parang, parang variant lang siya ng ating Regan, si Nagao. Electrophoretic, heat stability, and phenylalanine inhibition properties are identical to your Regan fraction. So, therefore, in terms of this parameter, katulad lang siya ni Regan. Kasi nga, variant siya ni Regan and can also be inhibited by your l -usine. Detected in metastatic cancer of your pleural surfaces and adenocarcinoma of your pancreas and your bile duct. So, in terms of the diagnostic significance niya, again, number one, we have already been discussing this, talking about your hepatobiliary, talking about your liver diseases, 
and your biliary tract diseases and your bone disorder. Bone disorder, involvement of your osteoblast. Kasi diba, we have a lot of osteoblastic activity. And then for your hepato, biliary disorders, more of your obstructive conditions than in your hepatocellular disorders. Again, when you talk of your ALP, pag hepatobiliary, more of obstruction than your hepatocellular disorders. Remember, in the liver, the enzyme, your ALP, is located saan? Matatagpuan? Matatagpuan siya sa sinusoidal and your bile canalicular membrane. Tingnan natin dito. Again, yung ALP natin, matatagpuan dito sa bile canalicular. Bile canalicular, tapos magdidrain ito siya sa ating bile duct. So therefore, once there is an obstruction here, then there will be an increase of your ALP. Kasi nga, nasa sinusoidal or membrane siya matatagpuan. Pag hepatocellular, anong enzymes usually ang ating test Pag hepatocellular, then think of your AST or your ALT, but more of your ALT. But then again, when we talk about obstruction, think of ALP. Ito talaga ang aming nare-request. As in, most of the time, we have a patient, jaundice ang patient, nag na. So, di ba? We all know that jaundice will have a lot of reason. Is it an extra-hepatic, hepa, intra-hepatic, or post-hepatic? Di ba? Ang post-hepatic, yan na yung obstruction. Kasi nga, baka obstructed lang, kaya hindi nakakalabas yung bilirubin, nagsistay siya, kaya nagiging jaundice ang ating patient. Or is it brought about by other factors? So, if for us to determine whether this jaundice or this uh, jaundice of our patient is brought about by obstruction, then think of your ALP. You have to request your ALP because your ALP, again, will increase if there is a presence of obstruction. Always remember that if there is a biliary obstruction, it will lead to 3 to 5 increase increase so three to five times increase of the upper limit of normal because it will increase synthesis of your enzyme induced by your obstruction so to ta -ta taas talaga ang value ng ating alp so other disorders we have your paget's disease or your osteoitis deformans ano yung uh, paget's, paget's disease this is a localized disorders ating bone that typically begins with an excessive bone resorption followed by an increase in bone formation. So, therefore, my destruction, excessive ang destruction, and later on, excessive naman ang formation, the destruction of formation. So, therefore, there is already a disorganized bone matrix. So, therefore, ito yung tinatawag natin na Paget's disease. And will that cause now the increase of your ALP? How about osteomalacia? Yung osteomalacia naman natin is the bone softening in adults secondary to prolonged deficiency of your vitamin D. Pero pag sa bata, ito natagpuan. Pag ito ay sa bata, itatawag natin na rickets. Sa bata, tawag natin rickets. Pag sa matanda, your osteomalacia. Then we have also your hyperparathyroidism. Hyperparathyroid. Of course, sige lang, you will have a discussion with endocrinology most probably in the midterm or finals. But as a review lang, pag sinabi natin para, hyperparathyroidism, therefore, there is an increased level of your parathyroid hormone. What is the purpose of your parathyroid hormone? Her PTH. Your PTH will cause increased bone resorption wherein your calcium will be released to the blood. This will also lead to the increase of your ALP because of increased bone resorption. We have also your um, osteogenic uh, carcinoma, something to, related with bone, healing bone fracture, and during physiologic periods of bone growth. So these are the different bone disorders can, that can be um, uh, detected through the elevated level of your ALP. We have also, your ALP could be seen in a normal pregnancy. So again, tumataas din ang ating ALP during normal pregnancy. Average of around one and a half times the upper limit of normal. So it can be detected between weeks 16 and 20. Third trimester, mas tumataas siya. 
two to three times the upper limit of normal and then it will persist the onset of labor and the activity returns to normal within three to six days but again ha we do not test for alp during pregnancy ini namin yan request but i just something to take note lang that your alp will increase during normal pregnancy in complicated pregnancy tumataas din ang ating alp could be elevated in hypertension pre-eclampsia and your eclampsia so hypertension may high blood uh, may high blood ka na pre-eclampsia you have hypertension during pregnancy your eclampsia this is already a severe a severe form of hypertension wherein there's already a uh, tinatawag natin na uh, there's already involvement of the brain there's already pos possible encephalopathy later on and your threatened abortion again we do not request for ALP because there are a lot of ways for us to determine for a possible complication ng ating pregnancy. Sa hypertension, preeclampsia, eclampsia, marami kaming tinetest niyan. But I, I cannot recall whether we requested for your ALP, no? But again, parang mga nice to know lang that your ALP could be uh, detected during normal pregnancy and in during also in complicated pregnancy. However, there are conditions na bumababa naman ang value ng ating ALP. Kanina, ang dinediscuss lang natin is more on paano ba tumataas ang ating ALP. But a decrease in ALP could also be inherited if we have your hypophosphatasia. Hypophosphatasia or the absence of your bone isoenzyme wherein there is an inadequate bone calcification. Again, ito yung mga inherited condition natin ha. Hypophosphatasia absence of your bone isoenzyme and inadequate bone calcification that will lead us to a decreased level of your ALP. So in terms of our reference value, so kindly take note na lang of these values ha. Again, this will still depends on the package insert na ating makikita. Again ha, as what you can see, it will really differ on the age of our patient. Ay diba, sabi natin, pag if already more than 50 years old, mas tumataas ang value. Okay. We are down to our last uh, last um, enzyme for your phosphatases. This is now your acid phosphatase. So again, your acid phosphatase, enzyme nomenclature number, 3132 or your orthophosphoric monoester phosphohydrolase or your using your acid optimum so it catalyzes the hydrolysis of your phosphomonoesters at an acid ph again similar reaction with your alkaline phosphatase but in acidic medium with a ph of 5.0 diba kanina ang ph natin is 9 to 10 dito ph natin is 5 so, catalyzes the hydrolysis of your phosphomonoester, releasing on your phosphate ion, your inorganic phosphate, and your alcohol. Ano bang ating mga tissue sources nito? We have your ACP activity is found in your prostate, bone, liver, spleen, kidney, erythrocytes, and your platelets. But again, remember, pag ACP, think of your prostate because the prostate is the richest source with many times the activity found in other tissues. Pag ACP, think of your prostate. Pag ALP, think of a bone pathology and think of a possible obstruction, liver or uh, hepatobiliary obstruction. Pag ACP, think of your prostate. Similar with our ALP, meron tayong different isoenzymes ng ating ACP. These are the isoenzymes. We have lysosomal, prostatic, erythrocyte, macrophage, and your osteoclastic. Yung lysosomal natin, is, this is present, of course, from the name itself, lysosomal. So therefore, present in the lysosome. So this is an organelle present in all cells with the exception of your erythrocytes. So, let's talk about the last part na lang talaga tayo, guys. The diagnostic significance naman ng ating ACP. So, this is the important important uh, clinical significance of your ACP. So, it will add, aid in the detection of your prostatic carcinoma. Kasi nga, nakita natin kanina, di ba? Majority na tatagpuan sa prostate. So, it will aid in the detection of your prostatic carcinoma 
particularly your metastatic carcinoma or metastatic cancer. So, however, remember that there, are, there is already a new marker uh, for us to determine a prostatic carcinoma. That's going to be your prostatic prostate-specific antigen or your PSA. So, in comparison between your ACP, ang detect talaga namin for a possible prostatic carcinoma is your PSA because it is a very useful screening and diagnostics tool and it is more specific than your ACP. But still, your ACP can aid in the detection of your prostatic CA. Specific substrate for prostate ACP is your thymophthalein monophosphate. And we have this kind of chemical inhibition method similar sa atin discuss kanina. Chemical inhibition uses your tartrate as the inhibitor. Meron tayong different uh, chemical inhibitors, your 20 mm tartrate solution and your 2% formaldehyde solution. Itong 2% formaldehyde solution and 1 mm cupric sulfate solution can inhibit your erythrocyte ACP na isoenzyme. How about your tartrate solution? Yung tartrate solution natin, it is a chemical inhibitor of your prostatic and your lysosomal ACP. Again, these are the different isoenzyme ng ating ACP. But it does not inhibit your erythrocyte and your bone ACP. Ito yung tinatawag natin na tartrate resistant acid phosphatase. Again, yung 20 mm natin can inhibit your prostatic and lysosomal, but it does not inhibit your erythrocyte and your bone ACP. So for us to compute now your prostate ACP, we will be using this formula. Your serum, paano ba natin, paano ba siya tinetest natin? Yung serum natin and yung substrate ini-incubate natin both with or without the addition of your tartrate solution. Your ACP activity will uh, remaining after the inhibition with your L-tartrate will be is subtracted from your total ACP natin determined without inhibition. So again, ha, yung ACP activity natin after your tartrate inhibition or after ano yung nagre-remain after the L-tartrate will be subtracted from your total ACP without the uh, without the inhibition, then it will now represent your prostate ACP. Question, will this be specific now sa ating prostate ACP? Kasi nga, isaplak na itong total ACP from your ACP activity with target inhibition. Is it now specific for your prostate? It will not be entirely specific for your prostate ACP because remember, your tartrate solution will also cannot inhibit, can also inhibit your lysosomal ACP, chemical inhibitor of your prostatic and your lysosomal ACP. Your lysosomal ACP are also inhibited by your tartrate. So therefore, yung prostate value natin dito is not just really entirely prostatic kasi nga, meron din tayong possible na baka lysosomal ACP siya. I hope that is clear. Again ha, the reaction is not entirely specific for your prostatic ACP because remember, your lysosomal ACP are also inhibited by your tartrate. Your tartrate resistant acid phosphatase or your TRAP present in certain chronic leukemias and some lymphomas, most notably in hairy cell leukemia. So remember that your, tra your trap na pwede natin matagpuan sa different types of your leukemias. It is also proven useful in your forensic clinical chemistry, particularly in the investigation of rape. So paano natin yung tinetest? We have your vaginal washings. In-examine natin for a possible seminal fluid ACP activity. It can actually persist even up to 4 days and the elevated activity is a presumptive um, evidence of rape in such cases. Again, it's only presumptive. We have a lot of a medical legal test to determine whether the patient is in for a possible investigation of rape. Meron tayong different test for that. Not just for your ASCP. But of course, ASCP could also be beneficial. But only a 
presumptive evidence. Okay? Your elevated ACP will increase if there is a prostatic hyperplasia. Your prostate surgery, we all know that because something related to prostate, right? Rectal examination and prostate massage. For the rectal examination and prostate massage, somehow conflicting reports siya. But if uh, elevated, it will return to normal within 24 hours. For bone diseases associated with your osteoclasts, again, still same, your Paget's disease, bone disorder. Another bone conditions with elevated ACP, we have your Paget's disease, bre uh, breast cancer with bone mets, and your Goucher's disease. Ano nga itong Goucher's disease? You have already done this in your biochemistry or hematology, di ba? And this is a enzyme deficiency, uh, enzyme deficiency of your glucose cerebrosidase. So, there is an infiltration sa ating bone marrow uh, other than the Goucher cells, by, by the Goucher cells which are rich in your ACP. So, specifically lang Goucher, kasi yung Goucher cells, they are rich in your ACP. Kaya tumataas yung value ng ating ACP. We have also your plated disorders with elevated ACP. Thrombocytopenia resulting from your excessive platelet destruction from your idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura. So, from excessive platelet destruction. Pag sinabi natin idiopathic, we still do not know unknown cause. Thrombocytopenic meaning bumababa ang level ng ating thrombocyte. Purpura, this could be a manifestation. May mga pantal-pantal, malalaking pantal-pantal. Your ITP, it's still unknown. It could be a secondary, could be idiopathic, could be primary. Secondary, commonly sa mga viral infections. In terms of the reference range ng ating prostatic ACP, we have your 0 to 3. For a target resistant, ito yung ating different values. I guess that ends our lecture discussion with your transaminases and your phosphatases. No? The important part lang talaga for the four enzymes that we discussed is that for you to really identify the tissue sources. Kasi nga, if you know the tissue sources, you will be able to determine na, ah, this could be the possible pathology, this could be the possible problem later on sa ating patient. And then take note of the important uh, laboratory, uh, the important uh, uh, ISO enzymes of these different uh, e enzymes and their specific characteristics. Diba? They have their own specific characteristics for us to determine these ISO enzymes. What else? Um, mga enzyme nomenclature, etc. So, I guess everything man, a majority here is nandito talaga sa aking discussion. So, still, I want you to read your bishop and most importantly, your Henry's. If you still have any questions or doubts or questions, you can PM me anytime through my messenger or you can uh, post your questions at ating content forum. I guess that's end, that, that ends my lecture video. Thank you, everyone.